Test, test, test. Okay.
Good morning. Man, I tell you what, it is so nice to see some faces. We are super excited to have church today. I want to just give you a few announcements. Things are going to look a little different today. If, if you watched my video this morning, maybe you saw that that I gave. Um, first thing I want you to notice, if you haven't noticed yet, I encourage you to walk through the church and see uh, the project that was completed. Did anyone notice? Did anyone not notice anything new? Okay, everybody noticed? Okay. All right, yeah. Well, we repainted and did some stuff around the corner, and, uh, and the Lord really helped us uh, have some time to do that. So we're excited to freshen up the church. I, I encourage you all to check it out. Uh, there's some more stuff that's coming, but uh, I want to remind you, though, around the corner, it's, it's going to look different, but there's still card ministry going on. So there's cards and baskets. So one, one basket will be for um, uh, cards that you want to give to people, and Darnell will pass them out. And then the other basket will be for probably cards that she'll put in there that you can come and grab and use. She'll have those labeled soon. Uh, so today, the different thing that we're doing is um, I want to talk about something. Has anyone ever heard the term Eucharist? I'm sure most of us have. If you're not really familiar with a Lutheran service or a, a, a Catholic service, you probably may not have heard that word. So does anyone know the meaning of the word Eucharist? Like we know it's communion, but the meaning to the word Eucharist is Thanksgiving. That's really what it is. So, so the Greek word for that is called Eucharistia. And so that word uh, means Thanksgiving. And so I thought, what better way than for us to open up our first service back together on Welcome Back Sunday and to give thanks to God for pulling us through this time as he's pulled us through many times. And he's still pulling us through this time. And so uh, this morning, the way it's going to look is right now, I want to initiate um, that thought in your heart to begin to, as we listen to this first song, which is Lord, I Need You, you know, what better song, to really do that, that self-examination that scripture calls of us to do and just seek the Lord for whatever reason that is. And then during the song, after the song, uh, the altars are open. If you want to come, you can. If you want to stay in your pews because everything that's going on, that's fine too. But hopefully you have gotten your communion cup when you walked in the door. Uh, does anyone not have one? Okay. And then after that song, uh, we'll uh, take communion together this morning. And, and not in a somber some time. And you know, and that's the thing. A lot of times our communion is focused around it kind of has this theme or this feeling of like a somber some moment, and it should be because we are remembering Christ's death, right, and his resurrection. And so we're, we're remembering this through those elements, but this is also a time because of that word Eucharist and that word meaning thanksgiving. This is a time that we get to give thanks to God for us being here today, amen? And so uh, that's going to be a fun thing to do. So after the first song is when we'll, we'll do that. Uh, another announcement, so Sunday nights, uh, we're not really sure exactly how Sunday nights are going to look just yet. Um, I do know on the 7th will be our first Sunday night service back. We're going to have our mission service still. And then on the third Sunday of June, whatever date that is, we're going to bring game night back. So if you are interested in coming to game night and stuff, I would say maybe instead of bringing a snack to share, bring your own snack, at least for, for June still, and we'll see how that goes. And uh, then the other two Sundays uh, are up in, up in the air right now. We're going to try to decide what we're going to do. Um, and the last thing for us today, if you didn't notice it, in the back of the sanctuary, just because we don't really want to pass the plates and, and pass materials from hand to hand, there's a, there's a tithe and offering box, there's envelopes there, uh, and as always, you can go to our, our website and uh, you can give online. We have been blessed with that ability now. Let me pray for us as we open up service with worship. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given us. Today is your day, God, and we want, to separ we want to celebrate you today, Lord. Let us sing praises in your name and your son's name, Lord. And just uh, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us today to give us an overflow of joy, peace, and love as we commune together. Be with our worship team, Lord, as they lead us into the heart of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we rise as we worship, please? Yes. 
Can anyone here this morning say, honestly say this morning that I need Jesus? (laughs) Every one of us. It's so great to be back together. And this morning, I I just, um, I'm just overwhelmed and overjoyed with with peace and joy and love from our Savior, Jesus Christ, that that he brings us together in in the midst of in the midst of heavy times and trials and times that we get to come together. And even in the face of those things, we can still find joy and we can still be together. Whether we're in this building or those of you at home watching us from, uh, from your living rooms or wherever you're at, we are together in spirit because we are the church. We're just in the church building today and it's great to be together. And so let's go ahead and prepare our, our cups. And so if you want to peel that first layer back and I'll give you a second because it's a little tricky. You know, I've said before, but communion is one of the sacraments that that our Lord Jesus Christ instituted himself. I mean, this is his table that we talk about. The Lord's Supper, right, when he was there, we've all seen the picture, we've all seen the images of it. This is his feast, right? This, This is his feast that he shares with us at his table. It's for all believers. And so this morning... Um, as we begin to walk into this time, I, I pray that you had that moment of examination and, and maybe sought the Lord and anything that he would have, have to show you this morning that we need to surrender or to lay down or even just respond to him, whether it be with um, a repentant heart or whether it be with thanksgiving and praise for what he's doing in our lives and our church and the, and the people around us. You know, we have a lot of brothers and sisters uh, and other churches and other Nazarene churches, and not just Nazarenes, but all, all denominations, all, all, all Christian faiths uh, have um, lost some lives. You know, we have a, a church in our, in our district just south of us that's lost, as of right now that I know of, six members to the coronavirus. They died. And so, although we haven't seen that maybe physically in our congregation, 
But that's still our brothers and sisters in Christ. That's still, and it's even closer to home because it's on our district and our denomination within the group. We meet these people. We, we, we rub elbows with these people at district events, and, and uh, we love them. And so today, even with them, uh, they're with our, our Savior now. And, uh, but today, we get the blessing of having communion together. And so um, Paul says in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, is what, what I want to give to you. He says, for what I receive from the Lord, I also pass on to you. That on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Also, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you, which was poured out for you, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink. Scripture shares right after that, the very next verse in 26, shares with us, it says, For whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, so eat of the body of Christ and drink the blood of Christ, whenever we do that, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he returns. And, and that sounds kind of negative, and I'm going to teach on communion today on this passage, but it sounds kind of confusing at first, but it's saying that we are in the advent, you know, that's what we say at Christmas, right? We are in the hopeful expectation, anticipation of Jesus Christ's return to carry his saints home. Isn't that amazing? I, I love you guys, and I'm so glad that we're here together to take communion. Let's stand again, and, and let's just kick this thing off. Uh, We were made to thrive, amen? Stand up. We were made to thrive. Let's sing. (laughs) Uh, So I want to introduce Rich on the drums. Wave Rich, everyone wave at Rich. (laughs) So this is like our anthem, um, and we all know this song, so let's just get jump right into it.
Heavenly Father, uh, I thank you for this this day. I thank mm-hmm. you for this day with all of us. I thank you that that, that uh, even w- we're tr- we're trying to be safe, Lord. We're following the rules, Lord. But uh, uh, Lord, we just love each other. We're glad to be here, uh, and I'm thankful myself to be here uh, for many reasons. Uh, but each and one of these faces is just a blessing to me. And Lord, you just bless me beyond belief. And I thank you for each one here, in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. (laughs) Sorry. Three. 
rejoices though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom and pain. That's when death was arrested and my life began. lockdown we were still free to worship amen, amen. Uh, hey you know um, we're not gonna have a traditional tithe and offering time I, I said they're back there but we are still gonna have our family prayer time um, you know and I hate to have this kind of conversation but I, but I have to you know we have to to keep people safe uh, if people do come to the altar let's let's respect them and pray for them but but not lay hands it's okay what you did but we just really want to watch that just for the safety of everybody for right now I, I just hate that we're in that situation you know um, but just please know if you do come to the altar, and I'm back here praying for you every time, whether it's coronavirus going on or not, whether I come or not, I try to let the Spirit lead me in whether I come up and lay hands or not. I'm always praying for every soul that comes up here. I'm praying for each of you as you're sitting in the pews, whether you came or not, that the Holy Spirit speaks into your life today. And so I want us to have a moment of that again this morning. I want us to have some, some semblance of, of what church has always been for us. You know, we're in a new normal. I don't want to get back to the old normal. I want us to be in a new normal and in a new amazing and exciting time. So we're still going to have altar calls, okay? And, and so I encourage you as we sing this song, uh, take time to just reflect on life. Take time to reflect on the season that God has been bringing us through. Take time to reflect on how he's speaking to you today. And pray to him accordingly, whatever that is, whatever it may be. Maybe that he's leading something into something new. Maybe um, it's just getting back to some normal life again. Whatever that is, give him praise. Seek him if there's a need. Uh, this is our time now specifically to corporately lay these things down at his feet. And we should do that. Let's sing. Let's sing the song. You stay seated still.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for everything. So blessed to be here and uh, to, to have church in the church, Lord. And we are a body of Christ. Either we're here, we're at home, or wherever we are, Lord. Uh, we praise you, and we be with, uh, please be with Travis as he gives the sermon. And uh, fill us all with the Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, uh, a couple things. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> anyone else have a testimony? <laughs> Uh, all hearts free. <laughs> Mine's not. So I want to. I was going to say something too, Jerry. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, you know, as a pastor, not I won't say it's the, but some of the greatest um, affirmations from God is when we are leading people into leadership. And I'm watching as you know, as James or as Terry has led us for a long time, and you know, me and Terry have a past, and and now he's kind of passed the torch on to James, and I'm watching James's uh, leadership as well, and I'm watching God uh, build up in all of our people, not just just these. And and Rich, thanks for being with us today, and Paul's played with us before, and then hopefully again someday, and and so. Um, and Erica, and you know, as a pastor, I get to sit here in this front row, and I get a front row seat, and and I know we're listening, but I see their hearts, you know, and then when I turn around, and as I'm preaching, I see your hearts, and and, and God is just so good to us, amen, that was a wonderful, wonderful set this morning, amen, Jerry, you said it, brother, that was so good, Um, oh man, I almost don't want to preach today now, I just want to keep worshiping, that is worship. Um, yeah, let's preach. Let's, that God gave me this message today. So, um, you know, this is Memorial Day weekend. This is a weekend where it's filled with barbecues and, and boating and all sorts of things. And for some, it's a day of going and, and they used to call it Declaration Day come tomorrow. And we decorate graves of fallen ones and uh, our loved ones. And you know, um, I don't want to talk a whole lot about that this morning, but, you know, the whole idea behind it is to remember, amen? And, and it's to, to never forget. And so we have this call for remembrance all throughout our life, all throughout Scripture, and that's why it's titled this, and it's, and it's based around the communion elements that, that we took already and that we're going to talk about this morning. And it, it's just... Um, you know, Jesus said twice, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but he said twice throughout Paul's, uh, Paul's version of it in Corinthians, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it's a memorial to Christ. So I'm going to share a few things just in our history uh, of America and in the whole world, really, um, that uh, has to deal with some things about remember. And so if um, this morning I wanted to talk about those things and and I was going to read the, this, this passage, but we, I, I recited it from memory this morning. And so we're going to move into to what I wanted to discuss today. And just a, just a few facts this morning. Um, uh, the, at sunrise, most of us know this, at sunrise, December 7th, 1941. We all know that date. Whether you were alive then or not, you know the date. Um, 350 Japanese warplanes um, flew through the mountain passes over the island of Oahu. I think I said that right. And they rained uh, down death and destruction on Pearl Harbor. You know, eight battleships and ten smaller warships were sunk and put out of commission that day. 200 American planes were destroyed. 3,581 servicemen were were killed or wounded. The USS Arizona took a bomb down its stack. Uh, The boilers, oil tanks, and munition magazines exploded. The battleship said to have went down in eight minutes. And it entombed... 1,177 sailors that day. President Franklin Roosevelt uh, called that day of sneak attack a day of infamy. And the national battle cry after that happened, which the United States entered World War II, was known as Remember Pearl Harbor. And so that's one of the reasons why I chose this one. I thought about using 9-11 and, you know, that, that kind of phrase, that battle cry was never forget. But I wanted us to have this word of remember in our minds. And, and there's been other battle cries throughout history that's, that's been marked with, with this phrase remember. You remember, uh, remember the Alamo, right? Remember the Alamo was another one that, that we used that same battle cry. And then there was, and I don't know if many of you know this one maybe, but has anyone ever heard of remember the main, right? I found a, an old stamp that had uh, a picture of that on it. 
But this morning, though, we're talking about the Lord's Supper. We're talking about Jesus Christ's sacrifice and his death and his resurrection and how we are called to remember that, how he asked for us. The thing that we took uh, place in this morning was not a battle cry. It was a call for remembrance. And so I have for us today just a, a few things that we should call to remembrance that I want to call you to remember. And number one is this, that I want us to, I want to call you to remember our Savior's final words. You see, the Lord's Supper is a meal that we receive because of Jesus, right? So just as, think about this, just as we take the elements and we receive them into our bodies, that means that we have taken Jesus Christ and received him into our lives. And that's why it's so important. Scripture even tells us that if we eat and drink of the body and blood of Jesus Christ without discerning the body, right, we eat and drink judgment upon ourselves. It's a, it's a very serious offense. But today, the Lord's Supper is more than a meal. It's a memorial that I want to talk about today. When, when, sh- when we share together in the bread and the cup, we not only have the responsibility of receiving it, but we also have the responsibility of remembering. And if you remember what I said this morning, on the night before Jesus was to be executed, he gathered all his disciples for one final meal together. This would be their very last time together before Jesus was carried away and crucified by the Jewish and Roman authorities. And around this table, Jesus is sitting with his disciples, knowing he's about to die, and he says to them in Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, he says, And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is from the Gospels. And then the Apostle Paul, what I always share when we take communion, like I said, he says in remembrance twice. And so we have to really break down this word remember. What does it mean to to really remember something? Because I want you to know this morning, church, it means so much more than recalling something. It means so much more than than thinking or or dredging up a memory from the past, right? To remember is to make vivid. It's to make something something very real in the now. It's to, to recall and to make contemporary the reality of the deed or whatever it is, the memory that you're thinking of. And in our case today, it's a it's a remembering of Jesus' words, his life, his deeds. And his death on the cross, which brings us life. Now, here's a cool thought. I want you to think about this. I know we didn't sing, I am redeemed this morning. But because of Jesus, we were redeemed, we are redeemed, and we shall be redeemed fully when he returns. And that's that verse 26 where it says, for whenever we eat of the body and drink of the blood, right? We are proclaiming Christ's death until he returns. Someday when he comes back, we will be fully redeemed once and for all. And that's what the Lord's Supper commemorates for us. We should remember our Savior's final, one of his final words to his disciples. The second thing is this, that we need to have this call um, to remember a memento from a friend, right? Jesus is the greatest friend ever, right? And so to aid our memory we got to realize what Jesus did here. He took a couple ordinary symbols, a couple ordinary things necessary for life to, to, uh, to, be, um, to exist, right? Food and drink, right? To use as reminders for us. He chose the bread and the wine, the bread and the cup, right? They're the simplest of elements. But when they are associated with the greatest friend you can ever have, the greatest savior you could ever have that will ever know, They become powerful mementos. They stir up emotional memories in our hearts, and it's 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 as an intimate photo album for us with Jesus. It's the same thing as what a a well read letter or a well worn letter that you have from a friend or or a gift from from a a mentor. And and I had I don't Roman lost it yesterday, but I had the the little 
cup that was made from an olive tree from the Mount of Olives that I was able to take communion from in the garden tomb in Israel. But um, when you have pastor's kids running around, some things happen usually, and we don't know where it went. It was laying up here. But I wanted to share that with you this morning. And so whenever I, it, it, that's what I'm talking about, Jesus chose these things. But when I see that, I remember my mentor, Mark Royer, who, who gave me that cup and who I took communion with. And so that's kind of what Jesus is doing. He's using some ordinary things to remind us of him. You know, and I was thinking, you know, I've been, to, as a pastor, I've been to several funerals. Um, just as, a, as in my family, before I was a pastor, we had a lot, of, a lot of death in our family in the last 15 years. And, and I've been to a lot of funerals and memorials where, where, where people would bring items that remind them of their loved one, right? We, we've seen that at probably every funeral memorial. And there beside the casket, would there, if there was one, would be tenderly placed objects that reminded us of our, of our loved one. There would be pictures and, and flowers and sports memorabilia and, and toys sometimes and stuffed animals sometimes for those who were taken way too early. And there would be other miscellaneous objects that carried so much more meaning and weight than they did just weeks before. And one by one, I would watch as people and individuals would get up and they would, they would rise to their feet and they would emotionally recount stories of compassion and love and laughter that they had with their loved one. It, it, was, it always dawned on me that in a time like that, there was never an unmoved heart in those kinds of places. There would be laughter mixed with tears and smiles and quivering lips. And it dawned on me as I was thinking about that, that I think this is exactly how Jesus wants us to remember him. When, when Jesus pictures, that's why he gave us those sayings, that's exactly because there are things to be tearful about, but there's also smiles for the victory that he had over death. For the victory that we know he's going to have when he comes back and he crushes sin under his feet for the last time. It's going to be amazing. And that's how Jesus wants to be remembered. And so when the mementos that we took this morning of, of the bread and the cup are before us, Jesus, he desires that we remember him. Jesus wants our time together as a spiritual family to be the same as if we were sitting around a dinner table with our household or our immediate family or, or flipping through a photo album. He wants it to be familiar, not us dryly lamenting his death, but vibrantly recalling his life. And you know, I've been to places before where people, they like, I don't want sadness at my funeral. I want celebration. I want laughter. I want a party. I want all these things. And I remember a good friend of ours, uh, Janice. She, she, her. There was a, <laughs> there was like a clown, right, and a balloon maker or something. I don't know. It was really awkward, but she wanted to have this celebration. And even in the midst of that, there was still laughter, and tears and quivering lips. And I think that's how Jesus wants us to be, or to remember Him. Not just dryly, always sombersome, but to giving thanks. For what he's offered us and given us. The third thing is this. Is that I want to give you. I want us to have a call to remember the deed that saved us this Memorial Day weekend. Now listen. I'm not saying barbecues and swimming pools and boating and cookouts are bad. Go do it. Have fun. But I'm saying this weekend is about so much more. And I would even go further to say it. That every weekend, every day is about remembering the sacrifice that Christ made for us. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not just a Christian on Sundays. Amen? Amen. You know, it's so tragic to me when I've seen loved ones and friends or just believers that maybe I don't know but knew of their faith. And they lose their wonder of what it means to be redeemed. Think with me. And I've shared this. I've done this illustration with you before. Uh, close your eyes if you want to. You don't have to. But, but go back to the moment you said yes to Jesus. I mean, the excitement, the, the Holy Spirit pumping through your veins, right? I'm about to make your heart explode, the joy that you had. I think of, of the, the overflow that Jerry had this morning when he stood up and he just couldn't keep quiet anymore and he had to say something. That's how we feel when we truly encounter Jesus, amen? But some people lose that wonder and church becomes dry. I'm not talking about Sunday morning, I'm talking about the church becomes dry. We become dry. 
And we forget how amazing it is to be a redeemed people. We forget that. It's more horrific to me when believers forget their Redeemer. It's one thing to forget that we are redeemed, but it's another to forget who the Redeemer is. In, in the past year, we've seen worship leaders and pastors just walk away from their faith. I've had a friend, a close friend, walk away from his faith in the last year. And no matter how hard I try to lasso him with truth, he's gone. He's, I hope he comes back someday. It's so tragic. And so on, on days like Memorial Day, we're called to not just remember um, those who have fallen. We do remember those. But man, it's a, it's a day to remember Jesus, the ultimate one who fell so we can have life. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, no, <laughs> Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, say that three times fast. He's one of my favorite theologians. He said this. He said, a Christian is a person who is amazed at the fact that he is forgiven. He does not take it for granted. And so one reason I think Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper was to remind us of the price that he paid for our lives. The price that he paid to save us. Jesus took the wounds of Calvary all the way to heaven with him. And I think perhaps maybe to remind us that he died in our place. And he never wants us to forget that sacrifice. Not for his sake, but for ours. Because when we forget the Redeemer, we cease to be redeemed. You know, it's kind of a silly illustration maybe, but it's, it's some good stuff. It's not silly, it's a little sad, but in the 19th century, um, uh, Ireland was stricken by a potato famine. Now, I'm on a diet. So I feel like I'm in a potato famine right now. <laughs> I knew I was going to go somewhere dumb. I'm sorry. You hired me. <laughs> we want our money back. No. Um, <laughs> so during this time, many, many people in Ireland would immigrate to America. And um, what was in that time, uh, the 19th century, what was the best way to come? Ships and boats, Right. And so they would stow away and they would hide and they would come to America to hopefully live and survive and, and have a new life and to start something, um, something great. And this one young boy, he stowed away in a ship that unfortunately hit an iceberg. I'm not talking about Titanic. He hit an iceberg and the ship began to sink. Everybody on board began to or frantically search for and get to the lifeboats. And the captain, he's, he's watching everybody. He refuses to get on as a good captain would, right? A captain goes down with the ship, right? Literally in this case. But he's supervising everything and watching the activity and making sure every single soul gets off this sinking vessel. And so he finally was, and there was a seat left. And so he gets on the boat or on the life vessel. And he's thinking, yes, I made it. I saved everybody. And he begins to get away. And he looks back. And sure enough, the young boy that was hiding on this on the ship comes out of hiding and he sees them so what do you think the captain said well the captain said we got to go back and get them and so they get back and the captain gets out and he saves the boy giving the boy the only seat available on the life raft and my thought is how little is this boy put him on your lap i don't know what happened i don't know the situation but i know as the life as the lifeboat began to to pull away with the captain still on it the captain yells out at the boy, and he says, son, never forget what has been done for you today. And I suspect the boy never did. And I say that because when Jesus instituted this sacrament, the Lord's Supper, I think it's as if he was saying, never forget what was done for you on the cross. Never forget that. Never forget the pain. Never forget the suffering. And never forget the sacrifice. Through the broken bread, Jesus reminds us of his body and how it was beaten to meet our need and our hunger for salvation. See, in Jesus' brokenness, when he was scourged, when he was beaten with that whip, he took our sin upon himself. He received that fully. He paid the debt in full. And, and through the cup and, and the bloodshed that spilled out was to meet our thirst for life. This blood is the thing that erased our sin. And through the broken body and the shed blood, he became the perfect sacrifice. He atoned for our sins. 
He redeemed us for all eternity. Eternity. We were redeemed, we are redeemed, and we will fully be redeemed. It's amazing. And so I want to charge you with a few things today. I want to charge you with, a, with an opportunity to respond to that. You know, when we recall what Jesus did for us, there can only be one response. That's it, just one. When we understand his love and what he did, the only response is to give our life to him. That's it. And so let me take you back to the, these, this upper room, which is an amazing place to stand, where Jesus shared this last meal with his disciples. He, he's sharing a meal with his friends, and it was as common as a practice as you guys leaving here today and sharing a meal with your family. It was so common. Actually, a Jewish man sharing a Passover meal would be as familiar as like a family Thanksgiving meal, or like I said, a Sunday meal after church. Passover was a call to remembrance. And remembering God's deliverance from slavery in Egypt is what that was all about. But on the night that, that when Jesus said this in Luke twenty two twenty, 20, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which was poured out for you. Something highly uncommon happened. I'm going to get a little silly here for just a minute, but listen to me, it, it's, it's real. If you remember a few months back, I taught on... Uh, what it would have been like to do a marriage proposal in a Jewish house. Do you remember that? Well, well I want you to understand something. In, in the first century, I want to I recap that a little bit. When a young man reached the marrying age for his family, the dad would search for an appropriate bride, and they would go, and they would have to pay what is called the bride price, which is a figurative cost in replacing um, your daughter. How much is Lily worth? Have you put a bride price on her yet? <laughs> how, Lily, how much do you think you're worth? <laughs> I just wanted to hear if you throw a number out because I was going to be like, oh, that's it? So <laughs> you got to shoot for the stars, right? Now listen, so when the negotiations were done, hey, you're probably our oldest teen in here, so think about this. <laughs> when the negotiations were done, when two dads were talking about this boy you're going to marry, okay? You follow me? <laughs> the custom was for the father to pour a cup of wine and hand it to his son. And his son, in turn, would lift the cup and he would hold it out to you, like right at your face, and he would say, this cup is the new covenant that I want to make with you in my blood, which I offer you. In other words, he's saying, I love you, and I want you to marry me. That's what he's saying. It's a proposal. The young woman would have a choice. She could take the cup and return it and say, no, thank you. Lily would probably throw it in his face. But um, <laughs> she could say, no, thank you. She's laughing because I'm correct. And... <laughs> Or she could take a drink without saying a word, signifying, yes, I accept your offer, and I will marry you and give you my life. And I want you to know that on the night of the Lord's Supper, Jesus and his disciples, they sat down together celebrating this last meal, this Passover meal together. The disciples knew the liturgy very well. This would have been called a cedar thanks, right? They had celebrated it their whole lives. And when it came time to drink the cup, Jesus would have lifted it and said to his disciples something that they expected, and he would have offered this traditional thanks. And the same words are still used today in a cedar traditional setting, and it's this. It says, blessed are you, Lord, O God, king of the universe, for giving us the fruit of the vine. And then he offered it to them, okay? And he would have said something that they probably wouldn't have expected. He would have said this cup is the new covenant in my blood which I offer to you now think with me here what does that mean there's been many meanings to that statement a lot of possibilities but one of them in common ordinary language is this I love you and the only picture I can think of that will describe the power of my love for you is the pure love of a husband for his wife you know, it's hard to, to know what the disciples thought. Maybe they were chuckling a little bit because Jesus just gave them a marriage proposal, you know. And Jesus is saying, listen, you are the church. You're going to be the church. Jesus calls the church the bride. And, and we should love other people the way Jesus Christ loves the bride, right, the church. And that's what he's saying. And, and yet, I think, in the meantime, while they're chuckling at this marriage proposal, at the same time, they probably understood Jesus' willingness to die. They probably understood that not only was he willing to die, but he was willing to be buried, eventually to be raised just to say, I love you. 
And as my father promised your fathers, I paid the price for you. And in response, will you love me back by giving me your life? And when we come to celebrate the Lord's Supper, church, we have to be, it's not just another thing we do. We have to be mindful of Jesus' offer because he still says, I love each and every one of you sitting in here today. Each and every one of you sitting in your homes, worshiping with us today, he still says, I love you. And he proved that by dying on the cross for our sins. And he says to us, I offer you my life. Can I have yours? I offer you my life. Will you be my bride? Isn't that amazing? You know, the taking of this cup is a solemn moment in the believer's life. It's a sentimental memento. For in it is, is a moment, is the moment that one looks at the Heavenly Father and says, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I accept your offer and I give you my life in response. I want to close today. I want to have my worship team come back up. But I want to ask you this morning, church, I know this is a kind of a heavy message for coming back, but it, it's, it's <laughs> this is, today's a Memorial Day or tomorrow's Memorial Day. This is Memorial Day weekend to remember. And so I want to ask you, have you taken the cup? Not taking communion with us this morning. I mean, have you taken the cup? Meaning, have you accepted Jesus' offer for life? Have you given your life in response to him? Or how about this? Do you, maybe you have, do you remember when you did? Because that's very important. Because like I said, one of the, the biggest tragedies in the world is when people lose the wonder of what it means to be called his. Church, is it as vivid today as it was the day you got saved? This is a fresh start for us. This is a new thing. God is truly doing a new thing in our house. Amen. 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 These kinds of moments need to be remembered. That moment, the moment you got saved, needs to be etched in your mind. Do you know why? Because you're going to face things like COVID-19 in your life. <laughs> you're going to fa people face all sorts of things. People face uh, marital issues, financial issues, health issues, uh, just random fussy kid issues. <laughs> all kinds of issues in our life. Dad, why do you always use us? You know? But we need to remember those times that we're on that brink of giving up hope. And I always say that the Lord gave me this phrase one time and I was writing in my journal and I said, sometimes it feels like I'm sitting at the doorstep of brokenness, but it feels good because I still know that I am redeemed. I still know that in the midst of whatever this pain is, that I can remember the sacrifice Jesus made for me and I can worship him. And when we come together to this table, his feast, we remember sentences of, of, uh, that embody life. Symbols dripping with meaning, the cup and the bread, and the overwhelming sacrifice of our saviors. And in response, we get to have a response of gratitude. We get to have a response of the Eucharist, which is thanksgiving. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to, to be here today in the house of worship together to take part and a sacrament that you instituted yourself for us, calling us to remember the sacrifice that you laid down your life for us. Father, we also thank you for those men and women in our services, Lord, that have gone before us to give us the freedoms today to do this. Father, I pray for those families today who may feel the weight of that loss. I call for... That to be on our hearts every day as well, God. To never forget, to always remember. But ultimately, Lord, we never want to forget your sacrifice for us that made everything, that made even the hope of life, and eternal life, a very real thing for us. And I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hey, let's sing. We got a little treat for you guys today. We've been working on this song for a while, and uh, we're excited. Let's stand and let's check this out.
again for bringing us back here lord and we i pray you be with each and every one of us as we travel wherever we go we will remember not just today every day every day that jesus made that sacrifice lord and he's coming back and we give you the praise be with us all and we love you lord in jesus name amen Ha, ha, ha.